Welcome to Healthline, everybody. I am Gregory Zarian. It is February. It is Heart Health Month. And with it being February, it's a little bit cooler. And with it being February and still cool outside, we have a lot more excuses. With excuses, that means we find solutions. And that means you drink more water. You still get up and get out. Get your heartbeat moving. You walk around the block, run, do everything that you're doing. And even if you're still stuck inside, pop onto a Zoom class, pop onto something with your iPhone, your iPad, even on your TV. There is so much out there to get your heartbeat pumping, to have your body be as healthy as it possibly can be. So if you make an agreement, I'll make an agreement. Get rid of the excuses, pick up a solution, and let's get our heart beating more and more. See what I did there? So it's heart health, and the healthier our heart is, the healthier we are. So our mission today is to tell you everything you need to know about structural heart diseases. So I brought you one of the best from Adventist Health Glendale, Dr. Amir Solpour, interventional cardiologist. Welcome, doctor. Thank you so much for having me. From Thank my you. heart to your heart, great to have you. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. So in regards to structural heart diseases, what's the first thing that comes out at the top of your head? What do we need to know? So um, I uh, always tell my patient to understand because this is kind of novel and new area of the heart disease. I always tell them think of heart like a room or a house. So when you talk about the heart attack, you're talking about blockage in the artery of the heart, which is like the water pipe running through the walls oh, of I the house. That. I love that analogy. So, but when we talk about the structural, we are talking about the holes in the wall, foundation of the house, or the doors are not opening at the house, which is exactly what we're talking about, valves, or if the walls between the chambers of the heart have some defect. So this is the structural heart. This is different from the problem and blockage that we may have in the arteries of the heart, which looks like the water pipe in the water house. So structure of the house, structure of the heart. When we think of the structure of the house. I love that analogy. For the most part, we are all born with a pretty strong structure, yes? Uh, in, in actually, in the heart, yes, but a lot of structural heart disease are congenital. M it, the difference is here, when you have a brand new house, you are assuming that everything is perfect. But in the heart, it's not like that. When you are born, you might have a congenital defect in the heart but you may not know it till you become symptomatic down the road during life when you do the exertion at age of five, six, seven, and some of them are too severe e enough that you are, you are having symptom at birth. Hold that thought. Okay, so get up, get a glass of water, do 30 jumping jacks, get a carrot stick, come back and join us. We'll see you on the other side. Don't go away. <laughs> Okay, so did you do your jumping jacks? Did you have that glass of water? And did you pick up the carrot stick? And do you feel your heart beating just a little bit more? Let me share with you a heart disease fact because February is Heart Health Month. Heart disease is the leading cause of death for men and women and people of most racial and ethnic groups in the United States. One person dies every 36 seconds in the United States from cardiovascular disease. That's about 655,000 Americans die from heart disease. That is one in four deaths. So let me ask you a question. Does that make you think twice about smoking that other cigarette? Does that make you think twice about not getting any cardiovascular exercise in? Does that make you think twice about your health and diet? You know, most people think, how did that happen to me? Is there is a pizza box? by the side of your couch is you don't work out as we invite you here at Healthline to be as healthy as you can be. So once again, with every excuse is a solution. So I'm inviting you today to find a healthier heart solution. Joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is Dr. Amir Solpour. He's an interventional cardiologist and we're gonna give you some great tips on how to stay out of his office. Uh, Doctor, do you find that most people that come into your office that are suffering from something heart, a regular heartbeat, in regards to what we're talking about, 
Do you find that most people will come in, you'll give them a solution, you'll put them on a diet, a health regime, they'll do it for a little bit and then just let it go? That's exactly true. And one thing that I would, would like actually to bring up, uh, a lot of people have a lot of cardiac disease and when they go to the cardiologist, they may not get a chance to talk about the basic items that they need to follow for a healthier life and they just focus on the medication, my blood pressure is high, how can I change that, I feel that what test I need to do, what was the result of the test I did last week. But the main thing that a doctor as a cardiologist needs to discuss is basically diet and exercise and what kind of the diet they need. So you can tell a patient you need to have a healthy diet and he doesn't understand what healthy diet means. He may think that if I go and get one cookie instead of five cookie a day is a healthy diet. So we Is that a healthy diet? No, actually okay. it depends on the patients, but, but what you need, uh, my, my uh, practice is that I go to details. I ask patient, tell me what did you eat yesterday from morning till night? So we go through the breakfast, and lunch, dinner, snacks, and then I educate them what healthy diet means, and then they can get their goal. That's the basic that a doctor needs to do, and then after prevention, you focus on pathology and how you can treat the current problem. So you start with the solution and then you give them the treatment? Exactly. Oh, I love that. Because there are doctors that will just say, here, take this pill and go to sleep and drink two glasses of water. Yeah, because, because there are two things for each patient come to my office. One is that he has a current problem that he's seeking a treatment. And the second part, which applies actually to every single patient, is that how to prevent future problems. I love that. So that part is not addressed routinely in the uh, office of the medical doctors, unfortunately, at this time. Thank you for saying that. Sure. And one thing, too, that I want to throw out there, because you, made this, you said the word education, and I want to hear about your education, sure. was because there is so much telemedicine now, it is your time with your doctor to be fearlessly honest and say, mm -hmm. this is what my lifestyle is, this is how much sleep I get. Because also one thing you say is maybe, you know, doctor, I don't, I wake up every night at two and three in the morning. That could be another condition to what you're treating in regards to heart health That's or exactly. whatever you're dealing with. That's uh, right. Doctor, share with us what your uh, education has been. Uh, I did my medical school actually at Tehran University. Okay. Then I moved to Houston and I was lucky actually to go to that place because it's one of the greatest places to be trained for cardiology. Uh, I was there and I did three years of residency and three years of uh, cardiology fellowship in Texas Medical Center at University of Texas Houston the Memorial Hermann Hospital, followed by interventional and structural actually training, which was additional two years uh, training over there. And then um, I started working there for a couple of years and then moved to Glendale. Uh, since you're from Texas, do you have cowboy boots? Uh, I do, but I didn't bring it here. <laughs> Giddy up. Yeah. Uh, what got you into heart health and structural heart disease? What got you to that path? Um, I knew that I want to be actually a cardiologist from the moment that I went to um, medical school. Our family, most of them are doctors. So, so it's like when I went to medical school, something that I was raised and seeing doctors. Sure but I was good in physics and maths. So cardiology is one of the few specialty in uh, actually medicine that has a lot to understanding physics because heart chambers, the way it pumps, a lot of equation formula is not just memorizing things, disease and the treatment medication, you have to understand. And as far as the structural is even more complex because you need to have a very good understanding of 3D dimension of the heart because when you are treating again, the whole between the two chamber of the heart, the heart, the way it is actually, is not exactly um, um, the two chamber next to each other. So when we go with a big needle from the right side to the left side of the heart, you know that you, know, you have to know the 3D dimension of the heart, make sure the needle doesn't go through the wrong part because patient will be dead on the table. And it's kind of like when you enter the house. Exactly. You know what you need to know which way you're going so to get to the living room. The best example I can tell you is that when you want to go to a house which the lights are off and you need to know the floor map so well that you have two minutes from this side of the house go to the back door. 
So if you make a mistake, you may hit the door. So you have to know um, actually by your heart the 3D dimension. Then when you go with a big needle to the heart, you don't make any mistake. That's usually, that's why it requires extra training compared to just extending the heart for the heart attack patient or the main actual area of the practice for people who do interventional cardiologists. More with Dr. Zopor when we come back, don't go away. Don't let your guard down as the COVID pandemic continues. Wear your mask, and if you feel safer, wear two masks. Wash your hands, 20 seconds, and also wash your social distancing, and stay home as much as possible. If you're not feeling great, just stay home. We here at Healthline know that your health is a conversation. As our guest today, Dr. Sopor, was talking about just being healthy in your lifestyle and being as healthy as possible. So apply that to how we are all living in this new normal of COVID. Wash your hands, social distance, and as much as you're doing it for yourself, you're doing it for me. Because we all want to be here for a very long time. And the best gift you can give somebody is respect and taking care of them as you take care of yourself. And just to reiterate, everything at Venice Health Glendale is hand sanitizers, socially distant. They are limiting who comes in, who goes out. You are safer walking in through those doors than you are not. So do not stay away from the hospital. Do not stay from the emergency room. Go because you don't want something else to happen if you think, oh, COVID was this. Keep your health, get your health on and stay as healthy as you possibly can during these trying times because we're doing it together. Joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is interventional cardiologist, Dr. Armio Sopur. Um, doctor, our conversation is all about structural heart disease. Real quickly, when we say that, is that including a heart attack or that's completely different? Um, not necessarily, I would say that they are all related, but the, when we talk about a structural heart disease, basically is the problem with the heart muscle itself, Got it. like a defect or a hole or the valves, because, because between the chambers of the heart, there are some valves that the blood go through one chamber to the other chamber through that valve. Okay. So if you have problem with those valves, which could be narrowing of the valve or it could be leakage of the valve, the blood leak back to the upper chamber. Or if you have a hole in the heart, some of these problems could be congenital. You were born with it. Some of them actually you acquire it with age. As you get older because of the calcification, you get narrower valve. Again, I go back to the same example. So when you have an old house with time, the door is not going to work as it used to. So same thing applies to the heart. So that's very good to know what symptoms you need uh, to pay attention that if you have, you seek medical attention. First of all, uh, structural heart disease, is it hereditary? Some of them could be, okay. but not all of them. Not all of them. Most of them are due to health, exercise, diet. Um, and, and also, we said earlier, racial. Uh, some of them, uh, let me put it that way. So if you have high blood pressure, if you have some underlying uh, disease that prone you more to have a structural heart problem, some of a structural heart problem. When you say disease, what kind of disease? Is like high blood pressure. Okay. So if you have those problems, that can cause within years uh, more chance to have the, some of the structural heart disease. Okay. But some structural heart disease, you have no control in that. So if you are born with a defect in your heart, or if your valve, instead of having three leaflet, has two leaflet, this is the way you were born with it. So you, can ha you don't have any control on that. So it's different from heart attack that you get blockage and then um, you get heart attack in the arteries. In regards to some of the heart disease maladies, what are signs and how do, you, how do you know? So very good question. There are a few symptoms like shortness of breath. But is it the same for men and women? Um, symptoms, most symptoms, sy symptoms. Symptom wise, mostly are the same, yes. Okay. So the main symptom, if you ask me one symptoms for the structural heart disease, I would say shortness of breath. Okay. But it could be syncope, you passed out without any reason. It could be uh, chest pain. 
Uh, it is it one time or chronic? Even one time okay. is, is important. You're ta if you are talking about passing out even one time. But shortness of period usually is um, gradually. Okay. So you said six months ago, doctor, I was able to take two flights of stairs, but right now after a few steps, I have to stop, catch my bread and do it. I cannot walk two blocks, but I was not like that. Or you can get swelling in your lower extremities. Okay. These are other symptoms that you have to pay attention. And a lot of these structural heart disease are the elderly uh, population's disease. And unfortunately, I get a lot of patients, they say, doctor, I thought I'm just getting older. That's it. But that's not the reason. When you say older, how old? Are we talking? So it, some of them uh, is just uh, people in mid 70s, mid 60s okay. or 80s. But again, some of them could happen in people who are young in 30s, 40s. And they were born with this, but they were di not diagnosed till right now. So but but pay attention to every single symptoms that you have. Don't blame your age for that. So it's a lot of people say I am 75. I thought I sh I'm not supposed to walk two blocks, three blocks. We hear that a lot here that from other specialists that come on the show that people just assume that, oh, I'm 75, 80, and I just figured, you know, my time was running out, and that's not true at all. At all, and then these people, when they get treatment and we do the treatment intervention for the valve, then they come back to us and say, doctor, now I know how symptomatic I was because now I'm a different person. So you have to pay attention for any change that happens to your life and uh, it doesn't hurt. Always go and seek medical attention, do tests, see if everything's okay. Thank you, Dr. Moore. When we come back, don't go away. <music> Welcome back to Healthline. I am Gregory Zeri and joining us from Adventist Health Glendale is Dr. Amir Solpur. Uh, his specialty is interventional cardiology and doctor, heart disease, when somebody thinks heart disease and they have to come in and have surgery, they think that they have to have their chest cracked open. And you know, some of, some of the diseases are cardio, cardiomyopathy, heart valve disease, atrial septal defect. So a lot of people think, oh my God, they're gonna crack open my chest and go in there. But that's not the same anymore, is it? Uh, no, actually, a very good question because the main area of um, actually our expertise in the structural heart intervention is exactly we can fix those problems which actually used to be treated only with the open heart surgery right now with a less invasive approach and we go mostly through the groin. Sometimes we go through the other axis and we don't even make an incision is like a diameter of uh, less than a couple inch in the groin and then we put the device that we want, the valve, and go up to the heart and uh, using the technology and imaging, we put the valve and repair the valve the way we want. And the advantage of that is that the length of a stay in the hospital is much shorter. So most of these procedures are required just overnight hospitalization we do today and they go wow. home tomorrow at noon and they resume normal life the day after so they can go to work even the day after. In contrast, when you have open heart surgery, you need to stay in the hospital for several days, then you have recovery after that. So there is a lot of advantage to this and then you get the same result as the open heart surgery. And these are all new. A lot of procedures started in 2012 for That's the fantastic. first time in the United States, some of them 2013, some of them before that. But I would say before 2005, six, we did not have too many procedures done this way. Real quickly, because I could talk to you forever. Mm -hmm. So someone is in, someone is having surgery and you are, as their surgeon, going in to repair a blocked valve, something that is closed. Mm -hmm you go in there and you're also looking for other, Prob other th problems that could be wrong. Yeah, exactly. So especially for a structural heart disease, you have to do the full evaluation of the heart. So if somebody- So it's kind of like a car. Exactly, because somebody comes to me and have aortic valve narrowing, let's say. So it's not like the other uh, problem. I say, okay, let's just schedule you the day after tomorrow, I fix it, no. You have to go through the steps. You do some tests. You do the CT scan of the chest, abdomen. Basically, uh, you know everything about the heart and everything that you need to fix before you fix the uh, heart valve. And also the good thing is that when you go through the groin, 
to the heart is like GPS. You do the CT scan, you know from point A to point Z what challenges you may have. So before I go and start surgery, based on the CT scan, I know what challenges I might have and I have a plan A or plan B or plan C to overcome that challenge. Do you find a lot of times that when you're in there, there's also a blockage that you discover as you are in there? Uh, I are, we always actually check that before the day okay. of procedure. So, so sometimes people need to come hospital. We look at the other stuff before the day, the main day that we do the surgery. So, so if someone has their surgery, what is their recovery like, and what is, what is your invitation mm -hmm. to them to mm -hmm. get their health back? Yeah, most of them actually, especially for aortic valve narrowing, they feel better right away. That's yeah. awesome. A lot of people, when I go to the recovery and they wake up, a lot of them they have even different color, skin color, because when the Aortic valve is narrow, heart is not pumping enough blood to your body. So as soon as you open it, you feel better. Again, I go to the same example I tell to all my patients. Think of the heart and uh, like a room. And we are 20 people in that room. And you want to get out of that room because there is an earthquake. If the door can be open all the way, we are all out in five seconds. But if your door open just minimally, you need to wait for 10 minutes to get out of the room. Same thing is blood which wants to get out of the heart. So if your exit door is closed, it takes time to, uh, for the blood to get the other organs. That was so, I seriously, I'm going to go home and check out my house. Um, in regards to, it, it hits more racial, what, what cultures does it affect the most? Uh, um, act, th there are some of them actually is more in some cultural, but there are different disease. So okay. th I, there is not a specific race I said is impacted okay. with, by a structural heart disease. No. Uh, in regards to knowing if there is structural heart disease, talk to your family, ask about hereditary. Exactly. Um, and this goes back to what we talk about all the time here at Healthline is have the conversation. Sure. Before, because I want you to come back because I have a lot more questions. How do we keep our heart health, basics, keeping our heart healthy? So the main thing I can recommend is diet. Some people, I tell them, exercise is important, diet is important, but if you want to choose one, diet. Give us a healthy diet. So doctor. low carbs, low uh, fat, high protein diet. This is the key. So you don't want to have the high carbs. So low carbs, low fat, high protein diet. Whenever you want to eat, uh, just educate yourself. If you go to grocery store, when you pick up, I look at the people. Some people just actually grab and put in the cart. A lot of people spend time look at the label. percentage, yeah, label. So you need to learn that. So diet is the key, is the main important, a uh, main thing that you need to actually have to have a um, healthy heart and low carbs, low fat, high protein is the key. How much exercise? Exercise at least three times a week and each time 30 minutes. It should be constant. Minimum. It's, yeah, yeah it, that's the minimum you want to do. Uh, one hour is better. If you can do every day is better. But constant. a lot of people I see, they do exercise for a couple months, then they don't do it for another month because they are just busy. That doesn't work as good as it should work when you do it at on a regular basis every day and constant. And one thing too that I want to say is a lot of people who live their lives now on the computer, kids in Zoom, my physical therapist trainer, he takes his kids for lunch on a mile run every day. He's given that so with, and here's the thing, mom and dads, you also get to get up and go out and be with your kids. So they are also your pod, your group. You're in the same household, you're all healthy. So do it as a family and it's about creating healthier meals as a family. One of my best friends, her heart is not the best. Mm. So she's dropped 20 pounds just by changing what she's eating. Mm. And she's teaching her kids that are junior high and high school how to eat healthier. That's right. So it's it. also a great way to change what you do in your household. Uh, final thoughts in regards to what we need to know, Doc, about our heart. So uh, one thing I want to actually tell everybody, you br uh, brought up a very good point. We have to educate our children. So when you want to change a culture, you need to target those people. So unfortunately, right now we have more obesity in children than we had 20 years ago because there are a lot of technology. All the games is an iPad computer. When I was a kid, I was playing soccer five hour a day. So, so now we don't see that. We were anymore. playing side by side, same thing? Yeah. Uh, so, so basically the culture has changed. 
So you have to educate children to have that culture, otherwise we are going to have premature cardiac disease 20 years from now. The people get heart problem at age of 40 that we see right now, 30s and 40s. We're the most obese country in the world. Yeah. Doctor, thank you for saving lives and thank you for uh, being here and joining us for Heart Health Month. Will you come back? Uh, my pleasure. Thank you so much and thank you for having me. No, I have to go home and clean my house. Mm -hmm. So you heard it from Dr. Solpor. Uh, Mom and Dad, it's a crazy time. And aunts, grandmas, brothers, sisters, partners, everyone, it's a crazy time. But you heard it from the doctor, it starts from us to our kids and to our families and it could be just to each other. We are on our phones, on our computers, on our iPads, on all of it. And there was a time when we weren't on it, we were up and out. So do it as a family, create more routines. Moms, dads, bring your kids into the kitchen and show them, because here's the deal, you're gonna wake up one day and be like, how did this happen? Oh, and we're gonna, everyone's gonna blame everything on COVID? Well, guess what? Other mission that I'm giving to you this episode is, with every excuse, find a solution. So find the solution of doing it as a family. Turn off your computer, get up, go outside, and live your life. Our mission here is to make you as, and offer as much as we can to make you the healthiest you you can be. You can find us on social media, and remember the most important conversation you're gonna have is about you and your health. So, get your heart on, and we'll see you next time. Take care, be safe.